Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Plays, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. My cat has been safely escorted off the premises and we will receive no further problems from him. Okay, so what I, I got the keys, so I gotta go get uh, the other flask shard and then we'll be able to upgrade the flask twice. And uh, so we'll have four. And then you'll get to see... I think Heidi's Tower of Flame is the area that's changed the most. Just that entire, the spread. The enemies are different, the uh, items are different. And pretty much just everything around there is different. So why did I leave when I know for a fact I have other things to do in here? Okay. Come down here, kill the skeleton. Skeleton! I'm defaulting to the hand axe still right now because it does more damage than the broadsword. Human effigy, thanks a ton. But yeah, I have been, for most of the time, running like the dagger in my right hand just because it's for the backstabs because its critical attack is so good. So, uh, yeah, there's that. I might switch to the bandit knife because it's a stronger version of the dagger, but I don't... Is it the dagger class that gets those super powerful critical attacks or is it the dagger itself? Because I don't think it's just the dagger itself, especially because I've seen other daggers that do the damage like that. Like there's... In the DLC, the Frozen Ilium Lois DLC area, there's like a magic dagger that you need like 19 intelligence to wield and that'll still give you pretty much the same damage in terms of critical attacks. I know I didn't go up the mansion and pick up the Titanite shards. Again, I, I haven't found the weapon I'm sticking with, so I don't see really a point. I, I guess I could... Yeah, because I should level up my dagger. So let's go up the stairs here. The stronger my dagger is, the more its non-backstab uh, attacks are still going to be good. So it is worthwhile to also be doing that. My channel, usually... My channel, here's the, If you're, like, a new subscriber, um, I used to post, like, a ton of videos a day. Like, I would post, like, four a day, four different series going on at the same time. You know, I was... I was rivaling Northern Lion in terms of output. But then I ran out of games to play. Like, there just were not any left. So that started to fade away, and, you know, it's become, like, this thing where just, like, it's, it's, uh... There's just less and less stuff... They're not releasing new games that I'm interested in enough to keep up with, like, having a series output of that many different videos. But right now we're in that sort of era where I could possibly come back and do that again. So... Yeah, you might just see a sudden rise in the flux of different series, hopefully with some variety. I know Bloodborne and Dark Souls 2 are... It's very similar games, so if you're not interested in one, it's far-fetched for you to be interested in the other one, but... But then I've also got Shovel Knight in there, just to bring up some... some variety. And I bought Axiom Verge, and I want to do a... I've been wanting to do a series on it for a while, but, like... I, I just haven't. Also, I haven't even beaten it, so... Like, I think it's a good game. I'm not sure if it'll hold my attention all the way through. Because so far, I've sort of dropped off. I was like... Like a third of the way through the game, and I just wasn't I wasn't feeling the urge to, to continue I know it's a good game because I played it and I recognize it as such But as someone who like doesn't have That extra like nostalgia factor in terms of Games that are that that are based off stuff. That's that old. Well, it's not really because of you know It's a Metroid kind of game and Metroid is just a game that I never played when I was young those kind of old games. I've, the only Metroid game I've ever played was the one for GameCube. And I liked it. It was in first person, so it was different. But, uh... See, I just I don't really have... That set of nostalgia. It's probably, like, the difference between... A 20-year-old like me watching... A cartoon from the late 90s for the first time. As opposed to, like, remi reminiscing about it when I was, like, 6 and I was watching them. Like, I probably would not have the same emotional response to Courage the Cowardly Dog if I did not spend my toddler slash 
you know, preteen years, uh, watching the hell out of most things on Cartoon Network, there's no argument to be made for how guaranteed it is that Cartoon Network was so much better in the late 90s, early 2000s. Like, just all the shows. Much better quality, much better writing, much better just everything. Like, uh, for instance... America Man, why don't you come help out? You know, the Dexter's Lab, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Powerpuff Girls, Ed, Ed and Eddie, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Samurai Jack, uh... What else was there? That's all, I, that's all I can think of right now. I didn't used to watch Pokemon, which is weird. I, like, I've been binging it on Netflix now, because, like, so I know what I'm missing. It's, I really enjoy it. Like, I spent so much time with the games, as I might as well, like, have the series. It's, it's a weird place to, like, have been playing the games for, like, 20 years, but never seen the show that was spun off from it. Don't attack the Heidi Knights, by the way, America Man. I could really use your discretion on this. Another summon sign. Dragon Man, let's go. Someone walked into my house. It better not be the person who was carrying my McDonald's because I'm not done with this broadcast yet. That took like 50 years, Dragon Man. You better be good to actually get summoned. Alright. No sublime bone dust from that guy anymore. And he respawns every time. So. But yeah, as you can see, the Heidi Knights are just littered throughout the area. And this area becomes real pain when they all start to aggro after you beat the Dragon Rider. Alright, Dragon Man is a sorcerer. That'll kind of help. That'll help with this. It's not going to help with the boss, but it'll help with the, this area leading up to the boss. Danger zone. I wonder if I could use them to kill the dragon, but like not even go to Ornstein. Just come back, pull back afterwards and go to Dragon Rider. I don't know. It seems like the dragon's better tackled with one person. So you do a lot more damage to him. Right. I'll tackle you while the other two get the other guy. Hey, except he doesn't seem interested in trying to attack me. Not good for him, I guess. Lots of cracked blue eye orbs. Makes sense that they would drop them, since this is the area the blue sentinels frequent the most. Covenants remain largely unchanged. I really only have experience with Heirs of the Sun and Pilgrims of the Dark. So, those are the only ones where I've attained max level. Because I hate invading people. I really dislike Dark Souls PvP, just the, in just the idea of it. Well, not the idea of it, but in practice, just the fact that, like, too many of my souls have been lost by invaders before I could pick up a large amount of souls that I had lost to the game. So, like, just to have them add insult to injury and, like, someone, a real person, invade my game. I guess I'll just have the NPC bring up the fourth slot here. Is just, I can't, I can't tolerate it. Plus, I've never won an invasion. Like, any time a human invades me, I'm dead. I'm just, I can't. I can't do it. I'm very, very bad at PvP. So yeah, you can see that, like, Dragon Rider almost doesn't know what to do. There's just so many targets on the field here. And we are staggering the crap out of him. It's the it's so much fun. I know one of them's an NPC, but it's still so much fun. And it makes putting your sign down for co-op a blast, because generally when you join a match, there will be three other people there, and then you can just help, and then the boss fight's over in like 20 seconds, and it's just easy souls, and it's real nice. Dragon Rider is dead. Ah, <sighs> feels good, man. 
And if there's any qualms about, like, if co-op is cheap and you should beat the bosses by yourself, at this point, there's no need for me to try to show off that I can beat a boss by myself. If co-op exists as a tool, I will utilize it. Because it's fun. And yeah, as you can see, the Heidi Knights, now they're all pissed off. So... They will come. You know what? I probably guaranteed should have gone over to the left first, because now the Heidi Knights in that area are going to be active, and it's going to make that a lot harder. Alright, bonfire lit. Might as well rest at it. Lisha of Lindelt. How, talk to her. I don't want to buy anything from her. I'm not doing any faith stuff, but... Uh, I do want to talk to her so she'll move and open the path to Huntsman's Copes when I need that. Sorry. Sorry, help that. Oh, done so soon, yeah. Okay, so, what to do now? I kind of want to do No Man's Wharf. I mean, I don't want to do it, but I kind of recognize it as the best thing to do right now. So, I guess I will go there. And then we'll come back and do the Dragon Slayer a bit later. Yeah, the stronger I am when I come back here, the better, so maybe I can deal with the Heidi Knights on my own. Still just got the regular old hand axe here. Should probably reinforce my dagger. Okay, good time to roll. That last slash, ow, delays itself just enough to where you might roll a bit too early. Without a doubt, the old knights with the maces are the most annoying. Did I not upgrade my Estus Flask? I got the shards, I don't think I actually gave them to her. That's really... that sucks. I will probably need them for No Man's Wharf. It's not difficult to not die there, but it, you will get hit, most likely. And I want to kill you just because you're fun. These are my favorite enemies in the game, I think. Just, I like the way they look. I like the way they are. Mmm, backstab. See, it's almost a one-hit kill, even on these guys. The dagger's attack is so powerful. 1,500 souls is worthwhile. That's like 1.5 times the amount a hippo would have gave me, and it took probably a tenth of the time. Yeah, so my weaponry still clearly doesn't reflect the path that I aim to take. In terms of, like, a dexterity build with maybe, like, dueling daggers or something. Something along those lines. But. Rest assured that it will get there. As soon as I can make some level ups that are going to affect my offensive stats. Okay. Yeah, I like picking the knight because you need 12 health to survive the fall to, uh... What's it called? To the Grave of Saints. And knights start with 12 health, so you never really have to upgrade your health at all. There's no need to fight those guys when I can't go that way. And yeah, okay, yeah, they added a bunch of, uh, Fragrant Branch of Your statues just just throughout the areas. Most of them are guarding Estus Flask Shards, which, which is why they're worth exploring. And, uh, so... Yeah. Fragrant Batch of yours are worth more, and you should. it's good to have more of them at any given point. So we'll rest here. Anybody have their sign down? I could use the co-op. Like, this is, I'm just breezing through the game, because it's. I love... Co-op is just fun, and I don't need to do anything by myself to prove anything to anybody. I just... Oh, here's a guy. Killer Shadow 7, why don't you uh, show me what you got? Summoning failed! Ah. Yeah, you died. Actually, as a matter of fact, 
I'm going to go back to Majula. I'm going to level up and I'm going to reinforce my dagger. And I am going to... Uh, level up my Estus. Because I'm going to need that. I haven't died yet. Maybe I could try to make this a no-death run. I don't want to put that, like, officially on the title, because if it doesn't work out, then, you know, what would, have the, what would the point have been? But, let us use a soul of a lost undead. Soul of a nameless soldier. I just got Dragon Rider's soul. I don't believe that his weapon is worth anything to me, and so I will use it. I'll open your thing. You should have done that a while ago. And good, I get the bow, which I need, so... That's good. That is good. Short bow. The Varangian soldiers in No Man's Wharf drop a bow that's pretty good. It relies more on strength, so if, you, if you're not a dexterity-focused build, then you can use the sea bow, and it, that's pretty good. Uh, okay. Yeah. Burn Sublime Bone Dust. And some Force to strengthen the Flask, which is quite nice. Reinforce my Dagger. Just going back and forth, back and forth here. You stand back, this is dangerous work. Alright, I'll try not to sit on your anvil. Buy item. Uh, yeah, okay. Dagger. Yeah, we can we can upgrade it twice, and it's gonna make a noticeable difference, I think. So that's good. And I'll probably have like a bandit's knife in the other hand, and if I upgrade dexterity enough, like I'm planning to, I'll be able to dual wield them. Yeah, where's the Mar Breckler's daughter? I'll try not to spend my whole life in transit. I am trying to become a monarch, so. I guess I'm not really trying to, it just sort of happens that way. Like, amongst my quests, like, oh, and then they sort of steer me towards, Hey, you're killing all these bosses, why don't you become our king? Well, okay, why not? Alright, dexterity. Go as far as you can. Mm. Let's go to 15. Let's go to 14. And put endurance at 20, now we never have to worry about endurance again. Because after 20, Endurance starts going up by 1 each time instead of 2, which is a load of crap, and I don't find it worth it at all. So, now, let's get rid of the axe for the bandit's knife. Wait, 11, 14, oh, we're not going to be able to dual wield with the bandit's knife. The broken thief sword is, we'll be able, no, because I don't have enough strength for that. Damn, looks like my plan was flawed. Oh well. I can put the bow here. And do we have any arrows? Got ten fire, that's all I got? That's fine then. I should buy some iron arrows from you. You again? I'm paying you, so how about you not act like I'm inconveniencing you, alright? Okay. Iron arrow. Just buy... I can buy 45 iron arrows. I can't believe like the description for iron arrows says that they're very expensive. It's, no, they are not. Like, even this early in the game, I can buy 45 of them and not give a care about the penny. The pennies that I had to spend for them. So. The regular arrows always go in the R1 slot, and the special arrows always go in the R2. That way you can distinguish from them better and not make bad decisions. Travel to No Man's Wharf. Maybe by this time, there's a summon the same level as me that can help me out. I'll summon people whenever they're available. You know, give them a, sp give them a chance in the spotlight. Alright. Yeah, don't fall off. Damn it. 
Okay, well, you died, so that's what's important. That was the worst thing I ever did, probably. Backstab. That's what the dagger's for. You know those long-armed creatures? You can actually backstab them. I was not aware of that. Until I saw somebody do it. And I bought the Ferris Logstone. I will... It seems... It, there's good and bad when it comes to using the Ferris Logstone in this area, because it lights up the whole area, which you would seem is good, because, you know, those long arm guys are weak to uh, torches. Or weak to light, I should say. And so, you know, it makes them, like, you know, all cower inside the building. But the problem with that is, once they're all in the building, then they start to, like, you know, build up their strength, and then they're not afraid of light anymore, and they'll come after you even in the light. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Which is the only kind of sword there is, I think. I wouldn't know. At least I can summon this NPC Shade. It'll probably help out a bit. He's got miracles, which is so he can heal me, which is really nice. Bradley of the Old Guard, why don't you show me what you can do? Even though I already know. I guess what I mean, show them what I, what you can do. Alright, you should be falling off. There we go. What are you doing? Yeah, I knew I wasted a life, Jim. You usually don't heal me till I'm under half health, so... That's what you... That's what I get for you being inconsistent, I suppose. Okay... Oh, crap. Okay, we're actually, like, getting hurt. But that's okay, because Bradley will heal me. How many enemies are there? Holy crap. Okay, bad news now. Heal me, please. Hey, Bradley, I'm in need of health. Thank you. I was holding out for you. It almost was the death of me, but... Oh, you're gonna do it again. Thanks. You must have unlimited spells. Ah, God, that would be nice. Can you imagine if this game had unlimited spells? That would just be... I'd just be using Outcry all the damn time. That super powerful pyromancy. Well, actually, it's not that powerful, but... It's really hard to get, so you would assume. I'm kind of disappointed with the high-level spells in Dark Souls 2, because they never seem to be much better, if at all better, than the regular spells. Like, Soul Bolt? That's terrible. That is a terrible spell that costs 65 intelligence, or no, 50 intelligence. Blinding Bolt is not, not very good either, but better. That costs 65 faith. Something like Sunlight Spear is powerful, but the, only being able to use a spell twice just completely defeats the purpose of anything. Alright, so you're using Force. I didn't know Force activated that quick, or maybe I'd... Because guys, that can, seems like it's good for deflecting attacks. Here is Lucatil. I can use you. Or I can summon you for the Flexile Sentry fight. Yeah, I will, I will not hesitate. And my axe is almost dead, so I should probably switch to a sword of some kind. Broadsword. Where'd you come? Oh, alright. Got the aggro to you instead of me. Backstab. Oh, it feels good to do that. Did you just not stagger? Because you should not not stagger. I like to use the gesture to tell me to come over there so you can heal me. That's pretty... that's... that's nice. Alright. Dagger not just for backstabbing, as you can see. Doing alright damage. Okay, there's two of you. Don't worry, I got him. Uh, excuse me. Bradley, I need you back here. God damn. 
All right, well. There's an enemy. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I saw you in the window. You're not sneaking up on me. Is there an item back here? No, there wasn't. This area is really big. Like, too big. This is the area that a lot of people hate the most. And it's annoying, but it's not that bad. Really, the worst enemy in this area is just your own weapons breaking. That's what's gonna get you. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. Okay. Leave. Break stuff so I can get out of here. I am going to... snipe these enemies. Oh, yeah. Headshots. That was bad. Maybe if I can get close enough, I can just lock onto them and it'll take the aiming work out of it for me. No. Yeah, that's sticking right through your head. Is that a new addition that headshots do more damage? Because I definitely didn't think that that actually mattered. Alright, you're dead. Okay, well they're coming after me now, so I might as well take them on head on. Except I don't think they can actually... Yep, they can. That's what happens to you guys. Hey there. Come on. What? Oh, yeah, you, okay. Also, what am I doing? Looks like both of us have, uh, have a little bit of poise there. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Yeah, see, he's got the Sibo. What's going on here? Run away, use an Estus. And you shoot way too fast, by the way. Like, I can't even... I can't handle it. Should I or shouldn't I? Uh, I'll do it. Since Gavlon isn't in the same spot that he used to be, it doesn't really matter if, like, I get locked out of that building because there's 20 arm creatures in it. Alright, backstab you... Backstab you. Yeah, this broadsword not staggering them on the first hit is gonna be kind of a problem. Uh, yeah, backstab you. That's what it should have done in the first place, sir. Alright, but we got a bandit axe in here. That might be... I don't think I have the strength to wield it. You need 18, I believe. Bandit Axe, Brigand Hood, Brigand, Brigand, Brigand stuff. Alright, now just don't let the guy up here turn around and break the crate. Or, you know, try to ambush you. I believe there's Titanite Shards and Repair Powder in here. Yes, indeed! Ah, my memory doesn't fail me. Alright, yeah, Gavlon's in there now, as you can see. So in order to get there, I gotta go into that one building. Yeah, I'll find it. Okay. And you gotta quickly dispose of these guys before they retreat into the building that they have already retreated into. So, shit. Just don't get close enough for them to aggro. Your shield is bad and will not save you. Okay, so this one decided to be an idiot. So let's take him out. 
I like that. The rest of them, since they're in buildings, will aggro if you get close to them. And even if you had a torch and they get cornered in a building, they'll, like, freak out and then, you know, the torch isn't going to matter anymore. Alright, I can use an Estus. Probably not going to need any for the boss fight. Because it's a super easy boss. Especially when I'm going to summon Lucatiel for it. And whoever human is nearby. But probably... No one really puts their sign down for this area because no one likes this area. But we called in the boat so that we can get there. Obviously. And I'm going to come in here for the fire arrows, but I'm not, I'm not going to kill the dudes there because there's really no reason to do that. And then... Yeah, that summon sign is Lucatiel. I think. There's a guy... clinging to somewhere because he falls from... I don't know where he falls from, though, is the thing. And this isn't him that I'm talking about, I don't think. I cannot believe that I missed. Alright. Oh, that's where you are. Okay. But yeah, these are new enemies. And don't, like, go in there and aggro the... Oh, did I... They're, they, they can't come out, though. Yeah, because they're stuck in there. So good. But yeah, those are new enemies. At least to the best of my knowledge. They're very fast and they cause bleed, so they're annoying as hell. Let's do this. And I'll make sure that I visit every building in this area. So that we might get all the secrets. Large Titanite Shard. Okay, should have enough to reinforce our dagger more when we get out. You cannot guard me with your two swords, so don't even... Don't even try that with me. Okay, there's Goblin. Yeah, 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 that's what happens. That's what's going on there. Okay, I don't need to, yeah. I could buy poison arrows from him, and that doesn't sound like too bad of an idea, so I'm going to do that. I want to buy a 20, because that's all he has. And then... Let me sell. And yeah, this is the guy that you can sell stuff to, so I'll sell the weapons that I'm never going to use. Chimes, Morning Stars. Pretty much all shields. Might as well. And yeah, that's the end of that. We can open the gate from this side, but this shortcut makes pretty much no difference in anything at all. And if we drop down here, you can see that nothing happens, because even though there's a dude here, he is not holding an item like you would think that he would be, which is lame. Okay, so, broadsword's almost out of juice. These guys all retreated into that house. Ooh, let me back... Oh, you... Damn it. Don't... There we go. Oh, it's an instant kill, too. I like it. Alright, I'll just ignore you, then. I'll pick up the human effigy and life gem. This guy's trying to hide for some reason. Maybe I should strong attack these guys, because the first attack from the strong attack definitely seems to stagger them. So that is probably a better way to go. Come on. Yep, that's what happens to you. That's what happens to you. You can actually knock this down in Scholar of the First Sin, which is a real great shortcut. <sighs> and it makes you feel a little bit better about uh, if you were to die at this point on. Let's go Lucatiel of Mira. Yep, 
Any other summon signs? Any at all? No one else wants to help? Fine, fine. Me and Luca Teal can handle things. Let's see, I need a replacement weapon though. Something to fight the boss with. After I kill this guy up here, which is... Yeah, instead of, like, there being, like, the eight soldiers here, uh, it's just this guy. And that does make things a lot easier. Alright. Now, what do I have that can do damage to a flexile sentry? I cannot wield a bastard sword. I cannot wield a bandit axe. I don't think I could even two-hand one of those. The bandit's knife is not really gonna do it. I can wield a short sword. So that's what's gonna happen. We're just gonna short sword the guy to death, and... Yeah, it's sure to not take five years. Any summon signs? Even if there were, you can't see them in the water. Okay. Do I have any, like, why, even if I, like, it would, it would, the rose would just, like, apply to the dagger, so it doesn't matter. What if I just shoot at him the whole time? Anyone? Maybe I should have equipped my poison daggers. That's also going to take too long, so... At least the short sword's quick, so you can do a bit of damage. Hey, Lucatil, you're supposed to, like, not just stare up at him and, like, actually hit him. Like, that's, that's something that would help out. Okay, he got staggered. He's half dead. Like, it's... I... I don't know why I get hit by that attack, unless I... Really does not seem like that should hit me. But it does, so we have to deal with it. Good... good shot, me. Lucatil just takes all the aggro while I destroy the Flexile Sentry. Nice combination we make, Lucatil. You did your job well, and you did it... Well, that's just about it, actually. Alright. Up we go to the Lost Bastille. And yeah, they moved the chest to here, so people would stop setting sail without picking up their pyromancy, which is probably a good idea. Examine. And go to, go to the last Bastille, please. <sighs> All right. Good things happening. There are actually enemies in this area now. There's like two of them. But they may be backstabbed. Yeah, at least one of them. destroyed take the elevator up and there is a bonfire in the cell one of them one of the cells and I like the the lost Bastille it, the few the few changes that are to the lost Bastille there's a fragrant branch of your statue that needs to be undone in order to access the ruined Sentinel fight and also as you go through the lost Bastille there's gonna be like four iterations of the dart of the pursuer attacking you. And every time you kill one, they drop a bunch of souls in Twinkling Titanite, which is nice. It's a fun fight. They're fun fights. They're fun little distractions that made otherwise 
unactivityal areas more activityal. All right. Item in here. What is it? Common fruit. I need to eat. And bonfire. Let's travel back to Majula and level up. Don't have a ton of souls for it, but it should be good for like maybe five. Four or five. I don't actually remember. So I guess we'll just have to figure it out for ourselves. But I do need dexterity to level up, and I do need... Flexile Sentry also has bad weapons, so I'm going to use his soul. I'm gonna need to level up strength and dexterity so I can power stance some stuff. Alright. You to 20. And you to 13, I guess. Is how that's gonna work out. Should be enough for some basic dual wielding tendencies from knives and the like. Let's see. Equipment. We've got dagger plus two. We can put the bandit's knife in the left hand. And now we've got the kind of setup that I enjoy. So that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.